carbon dioxide is the second most prevalent greenhouse gas, and it's our biggest contribution to global warming. Fossil fuel burning releases large amounts of carbon dioxide into the air. NASA satellite instruments capture the infrared signature of carbon dioxide in the global atmosphere. They show a rise throughout the decade. NASA also monitors other greenhouse gases, such as methane, nitrous oxide, and CFCs. In recent years, CFCs have decreased. Methane and nitrous oxide are on the rise. Greenhouse gas is most likely the main contributor to current global warming. It's the key piece of the temperature puzzle, and it's unlocked the door to higher and higher temperatures. 2010, it marks the end of the hottest decade we've recorded so far. What will the next 10 years hold for the Earth's climate? Computer models predict an even warmer planet with more extreme weather, less ice, and higher seas. The severity of those changes will depend partly on how our planet's complex system responds and more importantly on what choices we make. 38 million vehicles are registered in DC. This drop in gas prices you see here means that even more people will be on the road. Our personal vehicles are a major cause of global warming. Collectively, cars and trucks account for nearly one-fifth of all U.S. emissions, emitting around 24 pounds of carbon dioxide and other global warming gases for every gallon of gas. We took a walk on the streets of D.C. and were disappointed that we were the only people on the sidewalk that day. We can't stress enough the importance of walking, biking, or utilizing any form of public transportation to avoid adding to this issue we have created by our driving habits. For example, if you ride your bike to work versus driving a mid-sized car, you will emit 1.3 less tons of CO2 into the air per year. If you absolutely cannot bike to work, we suggest you carpool. Lobby your government to install more HOV lanes to decrease the amount of cars on the road. There will also be less traffic, which makes everyone happy. Additionally, water pollution is a huge detriment to the environment, contributing to global warming, as you can see in the Potomac River right here in D.C. Here are just a few surprising statistics about water pollution. Water quality reports indicate that 45% of U.S. streams, 47% of lakes, and 32% of bays are polluted. 40% of America's rivers are too polluted for fishing, swimming, or aquatic life. The lakes are even worse with over 46%. Every year, almost 25% of U.S. beaches are closed at least once because of water pollution. Finally, Americans use over 2.2 billion pounds of pesticides every year, which eventually washes into our rivers and lakes. To do about it, what would the policy be, and will that policy have an impact? Now, even Director McCarthy from the EPA, in answering questions from Congressman Pompeo before our committee, said reaching all of the 26 U.S. goals is not going to have an impact globally. And David, what we have to look at is the fact that you don't make good laws, sustainable laws, when you're making them on hypotheses or theories or unproven science. It's sentiments like this that prevent the U.S. from decreasing emissions and signing on to treaties such as the Kyoto Protocol described here. As you can see here, we can be pretty irresponsible when handling items such as plastic water bottles. 50 billion water bottles are sold every year, 80% end up in landfills, and 17 million barrels of oil are used in their yearly production. Our actions are shameful, people!